Welcome to Mountain Craft Studio. My name's Christine. I've been a needle worker as long as I can remember. I started back probably before I was even five years old. Uh, my mother taught me originally on a just a little embroidery hoop. These were very popular at the time. I'm not gonna mention when, it was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> And this hoop was fine with embroidery. We need to just stretch out the fabric where we are stitching. We don't necessarily have to have the entire uh, project stretched out. Um, sometimes that is helpful, especially if you're doing uh, full coverage where you're gonna be changing areas often. Uh, but for the majority of what I've ever done with cross stitch or needlework, this type of hoop frame is fine, whether it's metal, plastic, wood, whatever. And it will last you for years and years and years. However, sometimes you need something a little wider than a, a hoop. I'd say I bought this frame um, maybe late 80s. <laughs> early 90s and while it's great I think this is what this was the precursor to what is now called the easy stitch uh, system you can find the easy stitch uh, frames and system all over the internet uh, just search for easy stitch and it was there was this size and then there was a much smaller one and while that was fine for the most part I could make it work right, by holding it this way. If I wanted two hands though, I would have to prop it up against either a table or um, do some magic with, if I had large arms on a chair, I could lean it like that and then prop my leg up here and try to, you know, figure out how to how to do it. Uh, I made it work, you know, at the point, at that point I was poor and this was, you know, this was actually just a big step up from uh, my little hoops that I'd had all my life. At some point though, I realized that that probably wasn't the most, um, uh, it wasn't perfect for things like cruel embroidery or anything like that, that you really need better tension with. So at some point along the way, I bought one of these, right? So this slips underneath your leg and then you can be hands-free stitching one under, one over. Um, it's it's really great because this one does, it's easy to access. You can, the back if you need to, just by moving it like this. However, it doesn't really give you the right angle whenever you're stitching sometimes. You just can't really get it to where you want it to be. And while for most people, that's probably not a problem. Um, I actually have a connective tissue disorder, so any kind of repetitive uh, motion that I make continu continually that isn't incredibly comfortable, will uh, I'll pay for it the next day. Um, it's incredibly painful, so I always have to mix up what I'm doing and make sure that I'm the most comfortable I can possibly be, the most relaxed my body can possibly be while I'm doing my craft. Uh, so while I still actually use this on occasion, um, it still has its merits. Um, it's not, it's not ideal. Um, I feel like over the years, uh, I feel like I am Goldilocks looking for the perfect, <laughs> the perfect solution, the perfect chair, the per perfect bed, the perfect porridge. And uh, I've never been able to find it until recently. So I want to share with you a couple of things that um, I have found that are really good uh, for my, um, for my needs. So I'm gonna move you down so that you can see this. This is a Potoki stand. It's small. Again, you can find them. They're, they're not inexpensive. They are difficult to get sometimes. They come in a variety of colors. If you're picky about the color, it's especially difficult. Uh, I believe I purchased mine through Hobby House Needleworks. Um, they have something on their website where you can add your name and they will email you whenever 
one is available. Uh, the beauty of this is you can go back to your standard hoop, which is still my go-to when I'm traveling or if I'm sitting in the house uh, with my husband. I don't necessarily want to sit there with, you know, something large and take over the living room. We have a very small um, home and I don't, uh, I don't have a lot of space for that. Um, the, this Patoki stand, you can slip the hoop right in here by unscrewing this and then screwing it back down and it clamps onto the hoop and it basically becomes more or less this, right? Only this can sit on top of your lap very comfortably. It could also sit on top of a table. That's the beauty of the size of this one. You, it's adjustable. You can move this back and forth to whatever angle you want. That's the biggest downfall uh, of the other uh, one that I just showed you is that you really can't get comfortable with it. With this one, you definitely can. This, I can sit easily right in front of me and stitch. And then the beauty of it is that it spins so that you can get to the back of your work. All right. So I love this. This is probably the best invention, I don't know, in a long time. However, if you want anything bigger than a small hoop, you run into a problem. The While this does open up, it can clamp on to the scroll rod. Um, the feature of being able to turn it over is gone, right? So, plus it's, it's just too, too wobbly for something even this small of a scroll frame. So again, not perfect for everything. Good for small projects, good for traveling. Um, good for a situation um, where you don't want to take over the entire room with your, with your um, craft. And it folds. It's also great for storage. So when I do have a large project and I need it to be spread out more on a scroll frame, I use my Lowry stand. This stand uh, is all metal. It works a lot like the Patoki stand as far as it will clamp, right? It can go right in front of you and it can clamp your scroll rods. You can hold it on this part itself, but you can see it's not ideal, right? Because this can't, you really have to have these tightened. There's a lot of fussiness to it. After a while, it kind of, you know, ends up moving down. And again, it's kind of hard to turn around because it's gonna hit you one way or the other, right? You have to actually move the whole stand out away from you and then turn. The, the base itself can be very unwieldy. This, um, this section of the stand kind of turns a lot. So I just feel like I'm always trying to tighten everything up and trying to get it into the right spot. The other way you can use this frame is, um, you can use it from the side, so theoretically it's not so unwieldy. This is an extension bar that you can order. It's much longer, you can see, much longer than this one, so that if you're sitting in a chair that has longer arms or higher arms, um, or it's just a wider chair, you can adjust this, you can add that on there, and then I'm gonna screw this here so that you can see that it will go this way, which is fine for this one, right? I can sit, I can use it both hands. Perfect. It gets a little, you know, loose, but you just keep tightening, tightening up. And this one, I can go back and forth. Great solution for that. Um, a little bit unwieldy, but it, it works. 
the problem with this comes, other than the, this, the whole wobbliness of it and fiddliness of it, if you want anything wider than this, right? Which is kind of why you need a stand, right? <laughs> um, if you want something wider and you put this in here, You can see how it slants down to the bottom. You almost have to have something and the whole thing kind of walks toward you as you're working on it, right? You could put something under here and hold it up, which is how I've used it in the past. Um, and that kind of works, but then you kind of lose that ability to turn this around, right? The height is adjustable, so, you know, this might be a good solution for you if you only ever do smaller projects. However, I tend to get the harebrained idea of working on, you know, something huge. So when I was at the Jacob Palooza last fall in L Linden, Ontario, I was able to sit um, or I was able to see in person the Hearthside Crafts work, uh, Mark II floor frame. And comparing it to this Lowry stand would be kind of the, a Cadillac versus a Kia. <laughs> like it's not even, like they don't even compare, really. And so, let me pull this over. It rolls beautifully because it does have wheels on the bottom. This frame um, is probably the best, most easiest thing I have ever used. It's sturdy. It is uh, incredibly well made. It's well engineered. So my husband is a woodworker and I often will find things and um, say, oh, well, wouldn't that be great? And he's like, oh, I could just make that for you. And so um, with a lot of my crafts along the years, he's, he's come up with that. Well, when he saw the Mark II floor stand and looked over the engineering of it and um, looked at all the parts and pieces and how it's put together and what all it does, he said, there's no way I can make it for that price. So even though it's a Cadillac, it's a Kia price tag. So it is very, very, um, given all the parts and pieces and all the work that goes into making this, it's very reasonably priced. The benefit of this um, system, not only does it have wheels that you can very easily roll it up and forth. It's you can, It comes in a, this standard width. If you have a larger chair, you can make it wider. I, I can sit back with my feet up on a footstool. Let me show you. I can roll it back all the way up here. I don't even, like, I can just sit here with my arms. It's super close. It, you can spin this round and round. You could stop it from spinning by tightening the um, wing nuts on each side to keep it steady. It has, it comes with an accessory tray to bring, you can bring it up closer to you. That I keep my, my scissors, my um, needles, my thread, and then some little, you know, that, those stray threads that you're working with kind of thing. I chose to have the document stand to go with it because my, um, I use my iPad most of the time when I'm using the floor frame. And while you can get a tablet attachment that will hold a tablet up there, I actually keep mine in a folder most of the time so that I can sit and use it tented like this on the sofa or something or depending on what I'm doing with it, right? So I didn't really want to have to take that off and put it back on all the time. So I chose the document 
piece. There's a piece of plexiglass here, which you can't even see so that you can, if you didn't have it, you could see right through it. It's well made. I can set this up here and just look up anytime. Pull my pattern up and off I go. It's, I cannot stress how wonderful that this is and how much it has helped me to be a, a better stitcher of larger projects because I can sit and do this longer and not worry about whether or not my body is going to hurt tomorrow. The, uh, as I said, you can get a wider crossbar back here and wider um, scroll rods, uh, special order those from them. Um, the scroll rods that come with the stand are these actually. I'll get a little bit closer so that you can see these. They're nice and thick. Um, this attachment is my old system and these are these go with these, but I already had this particular project on scroll bars, so I just uh, use my scroll bars um, for this particular one, which is the beauty of the system. If you already have scroll bars and um, ev every size imaginable, like I did, um, this will hold them, right? So they're nice and thick rods. They come with the webbing attached um, the good old fashioned way. If you don't like that, I think you could ask for that not to be on there and you could use the um, easy stitch system, which is the hook and loop tape, um, which is what I have. I actually prefer this, um, but I had the hook and loop on this project, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. The, I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer so you can see the details of the system. Um, so with the Mark II, you actually get a, one of these uh, sidebars that have a variety of holes, you can see, so that you can make the width however big, or the height. I don't know what you call it at that point. Whatever. Anyway, this way, you would make that as large or as small as you prefer. Uh, the one thing that um, I love the most also is these bars that attach to the whole thing can be moved anywhere so that if you have a smaller project, you just can unscrew it with these, it has these knobs everywhere, right? And everything can be easily used with a knob. I have rheumatoid arthritis. My uh, my hands, while they're okay now, uh, someday they won't be, but I'll still be able to move and put this, uh, unassemble it and assemble it again um, in order to take a project on and off easily. Actually, that's one thing I should mention too. When my uh, frame arrived, my husband was all set, and ready to go. He was gonna build something, you know, and thought it was gonna be some, uh, you know, some big project. It is the easiest thing in the world. I could have put it together myself. I did allow him to help me, but you know, because he was wanting to be so helpful. Uh, <laughs> but it is super easy to put together. The, let me pull you forward just a little bit and I want to show you how, how I use it, how I sit. So normally, I have an assistant, uh, a feline assistant, and I can adjust the frame a little bit and she can still sit here right next to me. Um, and I can still move the parts. These can all move depending on where you want them. Right. If you're watching television, you don't want it to block your view. If you want it to be closer for a while, then they're easily pushed back so that you can turn the frame. What I really like is to sit with this slightly angled, which is not maybe natural, but for me, that's, that's just kind of the easy way for me to do this for my body. Let's see where I am. And then I just 
Make sure everything's tight. And so I can actually rest my arm, my left arm, on the corner of the project. You can see I'm just sitting here. I still have my feet up and I'm stitching away. I can move this, you know, a little bit closer. I can move it from side to side if I need to. It, it may be cliche to say it changed my life, but it really has. This is just a wonderful way to stitch. Absolutely wonderful. I can sit and do this for quite a long time. With no, with no pain. The television's in front of me. I have everything that I need right here. I don't have to do uh, anything. And right now I have this in my studio. If I did, I could take it into my living room. When I sit at a sofa, uh, you can just roll it right up to you on a sofa too. And then you could have, you know, cats on both sides. So, <laughs> so which I do often. Um, and in the past with the Lowry frame, when I would do that, you know, you have to, because I didn't have the accessory trays and I didn't have it, I had to move everything anytime one of the cats needed something or and, or if the dog was going berserk because somebody was at the door or whatever. It was a big deal to stop, put everything, you know, away and then come back and get set up. With this, I can literally roll it, step away. Super, super easy. Roll it, start again. It is um, worth every cent, in my opinion. So this is definitely a 10 out of 10. And if you think that you uh, might be interested, there are other videos on YouTube uh, that describe the assembly of how to put it together. Uh, there are ways um, that people describe how they use it in a different man uh, manner to hold different types of scroll frames. Um, obviously, you could also use this with the PVC type frames. Uh, anything that could uh, be, because there is a clamp that they sell as well. Um, any type of frame you can think of can be used with this system. I can't think of anything that wouldn't be able to be used with this system. And the sturdiness of this is fantastic. If you have kids running around, if you have cats running around, it's not gonna go flying anywhere, which the Lowry stand was always, you know, a problem because it was definitely not super sturdy. Um, if there's, if you have any questions, I'd be happy, happy to answer them. Um, just leave them in the comment section below. Uh, you can re look up the Hearthside Craftsworks Mach 2 floor stand um, online. They are located in Canada. They, uh, you can look and find it listed at the Evertotes website um, and go from there. Anyway. One thing that I forgot to mention is that I use hook and loop tape with these little clamps. They like, they're or clips, I should say. They clip off and they're easily, I can take them off. I can make these, uh, this comes on a big roll the hook and loop tape does so I can make them long or short, however I need. And that actually is a great solution to make the center section a little more taut if you like it that way. That's it for me today. I just wanted to share the solution that I found that works for me. Your mileage may vary, but I think that if you give this a chance, you'll find that it is accommodating enough to meet your needs.